வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் வீடியோ ஆன் பயோ மெக்கானிக்ஸ் இந்த லாஸ்ட் வீக் வி சா சம் பேசிக் இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் டு மெக்கானிக்ஸ் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வில் பி லுக்கிங் அட் தி ஹியூமன் பாடி ஆஸ் அ பயோ மெக்கானிக்கல் சிஸ்டம் அண்ட் சம் பேசிக் டெர்மினாலஜிஸ் ஸோ இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வில் பி ஃபோக்கஸிங் ஆன் தி டெஃபினிஷன் ஆஃப் பயோ மெக்கானிக்ஸ் வாட் ஆர் த டிவிஷன்ஸ் வித் இன் பயோ மெக்கானிக்ஸ் what is the anatomical reference position and some key terminologies so what is biomechanics in the last week although we started with the course on biomechanics the last week has been entirely focused on building the foundation for mechanics so that was more of engineering mechanics or an advanced version of high school physics so now we formally start biomechanics what is biomechanics so biomechanics is the study of the relationship between structure and function in biological systems using tools of mechanics this is one definition so essentially structure function relationships so if this is the kind of structure you have how would it work or if this is the kind of work that you want to have what must be the structure remember almost always uh, this is the kind of studies that get done in the broad field of biomechanics almost always we are interested in the relationship between structure and function and how complexity arises as a function of both structure or morphology or anatomy and physiology or function okay. so this is at the core of the biomechanics area the other definition of biomechanics is that biomechanics is the study of internal and external forces that act on the human body and the effect that these forces have on the human body so this may be forces or the movements that may be caused by the forces so biomechanics may be considered to be a sub field in the broad field of kinesiology kinesiology means the study of movements so when we say uh, biomechanics of human movement you are referring to it as a sub discipline of kinesiology which is the study of human movement mechanics itself can be sub divided into many branches statics dynamics which is essentially rigid body mechanics so this these two can be rigid body mechanics then you have deformable bodies and then you have fluids within dynamics we have movement itself or the geometry of motion and the forces that cause this movement are kinetics okay. and kinematics and kinetics can be classified into two types linear and angular okay. and within kinematics you have positions velocities and accelerations or rather displacements velocities and accelerations likewise in angular kinematics you have angular displacement angular velocity and angular accelerations okay kinetics can also be divided into two types you know that for linear and angular in linear you have force and in angular you have torque so far this considers a body under study to be a rigid body that is whose size does not change as a function of the applied force also but suppose there is a deformation that happens you know when a force is applied and there is a change in this then these types of uh, solids are called deformable solids within deformable start solids we are interested in studying the stress and strain and the relationships between stresses and strains and then you have fluids this is the broad division of mechanics itself but here we are interested in biomechanics 
it turns out that biomechanics also has almost all these divisions. So, without a need for me to repeat all these things, essentially biomechanics also has statics, dynamics, deformable bodies, biofluid mechanics, etc. In this course, we will be primarily focusing on statics and some dynamics restricting our attention to kinematics of human movement and some amount of discussion of deformable bodies will happen, but it will not be too detailed and we will not be focusing on biofluid mechanics. So, this is the broad outline of this course that we have. When we study biomechanics, we are interested in studying or describing movements with respect to a reference. So, the position of reference that is used for all movements is called anatomical reference position. That is, when you are facing with your uh, two palms, when you are standing with your arms on the side, with the two palms facing outside like this, like, like I am now standing. You can see my two palms. So, this is to make it a bit more clear, this is an erect standing position with all the body parts facing forward. The parts of the body that are forward must face forward. Hips and knees are extended, so I am not bending the, at the hips or knees. Head is facing forward, my face is, is towards like this, it is not bent like this or like that, it is not uh, on the sideways, it is just facing forward. Eyes open and looking directly forward. My eyes are like this and not like this, right? My mouth is closed. I was not sure. I am not sure when I was showing the anatomical position, my mouth was closed. But in the anatomical position, my mouth must be closed, okay? And the arms are down on the side. Palms are facing you. Palms facing you. Feet are parallel and together, okay? So, like this man here, this outline of this human here is uh, standing. This position is the anatomical reference position and any movement that we will describe will be with reference to this anatomical position, so very critical. So, any movement that we describe in future, that we talk about in future, in that this will be this particular posture or this particular position of reference will be used as the basis to compare some terminologies and directional terminologies. Okay. One difference, so I am standing like this, there is the front side of the body and then there is the back side of the body. The front side of the body is called anterior, that is towards the front of the body, anterior. The back side of the body is called posterior, that is towards the back of the body. Then I can also classify this as towards the top of my body or towards the head side of the body or towards the leg or the foot side of the body. The head side is cal called superior and the leg side is called inferior. Superior means towards the top of the body. Inferior means towards the bottom of the body or towards the leg. Also, sometimes we are interested in classifying the movements as to whether it is closer to the head or whether it is closer to the tail. Although humans do not have a tail, we do have a tailbone. So, those parts of the body that are closer to the tail are called caudal, okay, closer to the tail and those parts of the body that are closer to the head are called cephalic. closer to the head, cephalic is what is written, that is closer to the head. This is with reference to the directions. So, we have, let us go back. So, we have anterior, posterior, we have superior, inferior, we have cephalic and closer to the tail, caudal. Okay. But we are not done because of the three dimensions, we have only looked at two of the dimensions front back and up down. What about left and right? 
something that we have not seen that we will see in the next slide. Towards the midline of the body, it's called medial. Towards the midline of the body, it's called medial. That makes sense. Medial is towards the midline. Lateral means on the side or away from the midline. Okay. So, when I am standing like this, my chest is medial and my hands or arms are on the lateral side. So, lateral means on the side, the one that is closer to the midline of the body is medial. Then we are interested in discussing how close a particular part of the body is to the center of the body. This is suppose I am extending my arm like this, the shoulder is the closest to the midline of the body or the center of the body when compared with the elbow. That is when someone is working closely with another person you would say that they are working in close proximity. With someone. Proximity means what? In the neighborhood, nearer that is what it means. So, when you say like this the shoulder is considered a proximal joint when compared with the elbow. The other way of saying this is when compared with the shoulder, the elbow is further away from the center of the body. That is, it is distal to the shoulder. Note that this is a relative reference term. Now, let us look at the shoulder, elbow and the wrist joints, all these three joints. The elbow joint is distal to the shoulder joint, but when compared with the wrist joint, it is more proximal, right. When I am keeping like this, the elbow is more proximal when compared with the wrist, but it is more distal when compared with the shoulder. So, a given joint may be considered proximal or distal depending on what is the reference that you are using to discuss that. Okay. So, proximal means uh, proximal means closer to the center of the body, distal means away from the center of the body. Superficial means superficial means what? Something that is on the surface, right? Something that is on the surface, right? Superficial. Some tissues, some parts of the body are found deep inside the body. That means that they are away or found deep inside the body. Sometimes when referring to sides of the body, there are some terminologies that are used. One is when something happens only on one side of the body that is called unilateral. Uni means one, lateral means side. Unilateral means something that happens only on one side of the body. If something happens on both sides of the body, right, if there is pain that happens on both sides of the body, body, then you call it as bilateral pain. Bi means two, lateral means side. Right? two sides, bilateral means two sides. Ipsilateral means something that is happening on the same side of the body. For example, this arm, the right arm and the right leg are ipsilateral. Ipsi means the same side, ipsi means same, ipsilateral means same side. Contralateral means, contra means on the opposite side, lateral means side, right. The left hand and the right leg are, the left hand and the right leg are contralateral to each other. Likewise, the right hand and the left leg are contralateral to each other, okay. So, those that are found on the opposite side are called contralateral. Contra means on the opposite side. Contra means something that is opposing. Ipsi means something that is on the same side. So, with this we come to the end of this video. So, in this video we have seen what is biomechanics and how it is defined within the subfield of kinesiology. The divisions of mechanics and the divisions of biomechanics and what is the anatomical reference position 
terminologies in terms of directions and in terms of body positions, something that we have discussed. Thank you very much for your attention.